There's a fish. You get a good one? Yep, that's a good fish. All right. <laughs> get him in here, buddy. No, man, Little he's patchy pulling. Bass. This one's pulling. He's coming up. He's coming oh. up. He's coming up. He's coming up. Wire oh, <laughs> yeah. All right, son. That's what I'm talking about. What a way to do start the game right here. Man. Pitchy leak bass, baby. <laughs> Got that light wire spinner, but you don't want to pull him too hard, you know? Come on, baby. Woo. Nice. Yeah. Nice. What a way to start. Oh, huh? he's pulling. I'm telling you, he's pulling. Goodness, come on. <laughs> Good I'm gonna job. I'm going to need some help I with this got, one, I think. Just had one. <laughs> pop it. Man. Slow rolling that big slow spinner bait, rolling. man. Slow as you can Golly. roll it. This oh, is crazy. Man. This is crazy. Oh, oh, oh that's, a good, oh, that's fish. a good fish right there. All right, need your help. All right, here we go. Come on. No, 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 no. I got it. <laughs> Look at that. Woo. Look that's at my spinner bait. That's what I'm talking about, son. Straighten my spinner bait. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, folks. Look at that fish. There Woo. you go, Matt. Oh my goodness, now that is a slow roll, what do you call it, a bottom bouncer spinnerbait bass. Golly, look at that fish, how healthy it is. Apache Lake. Man, love that. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> you know what, it just loaded up too. I was just barely feeling the blades turn on the spinnerbait and it just got heavy. Let's let him go, that's, that's solid. Here's that's the deal solid folks, that's, that's awesome. Great job, Matt. <laughs> Here's the deal folks. You know, for years, we've always thought of spinner baits and, and things like that, you know, on these lakes or whenever you throw it, a little bit of wind, we got a little bit of breeze, but we've always thrown those quarter ounce, three eighths ounce, half ounce baits up on the bank. Sure, you can slow roll it, you can bring it in fast, you can do different techniques with it, but we're here pre-fishing for an ABA, American Bass uh, Team Tournament, which, uh, we owe one to Yamamoto. He beat us by two tenths of a pound for the boat last year, so we're trying to get back three to Mead. Oh, three tenths, yeah. So anyways, uh, but here's a new technique for you with that spinnerbait. Slow rolling it out in deeper water on the ledges and hit bump and rock with it with a big one ounce spinnerbait. What do you think of that, huh? Yeah, this is a big one ounce spinnerbait. It's a four and four and a half ounce, or four and four and a half blade. They're they're a little bit smaller blades, so sure. so that you know with the one ounce head it goes down deeper. And I'm fishing it in 15 to 20 foot of water, you know, fishing it real deep, and uh, just really slow rolling it on the bottom. And that fish just loaded up. I just I was I was just barely <laughs> feeling the blades turning, and all of a sudden it got heavy, and I reeled up, and there's a fish on it, and that. You know, shoot, that was almost a four pounder. That's beautiful you know? <laughs> fish, beautiful fish. And I'll tell you right now, that's uh, the way when that thing came out of the water, it was gorgeous. But explain to the folks what size line we're using for this. Yeah, you know what? This is 17 pound fluorocarbon line. I like the fluorocarbon because it's, you know, less stretch. You really feel the blades turn. And that's the key to, to fishing the spinnerbait is feeling those blades turn. You know, you're, you're just barely slow rolling it, ticking the bottom, you know, feeling the rock, feeling whatever's down there. And you know, this is a one ounce spinnerbait, just a, you know, pearl, this is a pearl white skirt. Sure. You know, if the water's a little more clear, just pearl and white. If it's muddy, you know, go to the chartreuse or chartreuse and white. But I keep it real simple with the spinnerbaits, but the key to this spinnerbait, in my opinion, is light wire. And you saw when I caught that fish, the wire was straightened out. Yeah. But it's real light wire, so as these blades turn, you know, it really puts out a lot of vibration. You can really slow roll it and really have a, you know, a lot of vibration. You can really feel it on, you know, the end of your rod when you're reeling, you know, that, that vibration with those blades turning. So any and, little bit of difference. And of is, course, what Matt's saying is you make sure you don't buy one. When you go to the store, you buy like five. You know? Yeah, because <laughs> when you Especially with the light a wire. Fish, what size rod? We're using, I'm using a medium heavy. Yeah. Yeah, medium heavy rod. Yep, I got a seven and a half foot medium heavy rod, 17 pound line, and there's a one ounce spinnerbait with uh, double willow leaf blades. That's just, what we're doing right there. Just slow rolling it. You wanna, you wanna reel it as slow as you can to where you feel the blades turning, right? That's you know, right. That, that, as yep. long as you can feel the blades turning, you're reeling it right. Now, how does this feel for you versus when you caught that, of course, there's nothing <laughs> like catching that state record bass, but he caught, he had the state record bass on a spinnerbait. So this is one of Matt's loves that's, is to throw that spinnerbait. So anytime he picks it up, he feels pretty much at home, right? I mean, oh, you exactly. love that spinnerbait. And that's, that's the way I caught that 16 pound largemouth at Canyon Lake back in 1991. <laughs> you know, just slow rolling a spinnerbait. But that spinnerbait had a willow leaf and a Colorado blade. The Colorado blades are round. They put a little bit mm -hmm. more vibration. But with, with the clear water we have in Arizona, the, the, the double willow leaf is just an awesome combination. Well, let's get back to it, man. I'm ready to go <laughs> after it. I want my bite. I had a little bite just before he had that one and I'm like oh they are they're right there 
But you really got to be have patience with this. We'll throw it out there, slow roll it, and see what we can't get. Got him. Yeah. Oh, that's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Easy does it, baby. That's a good fish. He was there. Need some help. I just don't want him jumping. I don't know how big he is. Ah, he's not that big, but I got him. Nice he's still a good fish. <laughs> <laughs> Those pretty big bass. Oh, that's a good one. Is that help? I'm looking for you. Yeah. <laughs> With that light wire, you just do not want to muscle them too much once oh, you get them out. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh, that's a real good fish, dude. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Slow rolling that spinner bait. Look at that, folks. <laughs> All right. It just gets real spongy on you. You set the hook and there it is. Yeah, just heavy all of a sudden, you know, Look that's that. the way the Look last one bit. Look how fat that fish is. You don't think they're eating good? Look at that, huh? Spinnerbait bass. Deep water spinnerbait bass. Yeah, these fish are Matt. coming anywhere from what, 15 to 20 foot? Yes. You know, just letting, you know, letting that line sink down <laughs> and just slow rolling it. Just, just so you feel the blades turning. Yeah. You know? You know, so many people, throw blades right on the bank. We're out here finding the little cuts and drop-offs and things like that, and man, getting ready for that night tournament, it starts about the time we got out here, six o'clock, six to, six one. to yeah. one. Six to one in the morning. You might have a treat tonight. We <laughs> brought some lights. We might have to, to show you a little night fishing tonight if we can get away with it. We'll see how well it goes, <laughs> but boy, wouldn't that be fun? I huh? hope so, I hope so. Hopefully we can get on some fish this evening too. You know, but... And that's what happened last week. There was a tournament up here, 27, oh. 27 pounds won it for five fish. You know, so if you think about, you know, five, five pound average, six pound average, I mean, it's 16 ama weights, it's amazing. over 20 pounds last week for five fish. That's a four pound average, that's awesome. Well, we mean, want a piece of that action. We did a, Lakes get, you know, ha, has some quality, quality fish. Oh, it's it. unbelievable. But we did a tournament. We did tournaments here, what, night tournaments a couple of years ago, Matt mm -hmm. and I did. And we won like two of them. It was fun. But it was definitely different fishing then than it is now. It's, we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can catch them. You that know, was a nice bite. Yeah, we had 20, 22 pounds, but those fish, oh, yeah. have, those fish have grown up over the last couple of years. And I think all those four pounders we were catching are now five and six pounders, you know? Oh, man. The fish are healthy here, you know, healthy. You know, a lot of it, what I'm doing, and I, I think Matt's doing the same thing, I'm watching him, but when you let that bait fall, before you, right as you start to reel, you wanna pop your rod tip to get those blades started. And then look at him, look how slow yeah. he's reeling the my, reel. My blades, my blades are turning right now. I can feel the blades vibrating. And that's how fast I'm turning. I got a 6.4 to one gear ratio reel, and that's all it takes. And I'm. I'm ticking the bottom, I'm deflecting off, you know, the bottom and hitting yep. the rocks. It makes noise, it gives an erratic movement, and uh, that seems to be what triggers the fish to bite. Oh, you know, just, just making that contact with whatever's down there, whether it's brush, rocks, boulders, you know, the bottom, sand, you, you know, you whatever, whatever's down there. If you make that contact, and all you gotta do is just reel that fast to get those blades turning, you know? Doesn't, well, we'll see what kind of weight we can produce tonight, but uh, <coughs> it's really gotta happen tomorrow night. But. <laughs> Hopefully you don't. Don't sting them too bad. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> we'll figure out a few little things that work for us real good tonight, and then uh, hopefully we'll see what happens tomorrow night for sure. Yeah. There's one. Oh. There's one. There's one. There's a night fish. Decent? Eh, it's hard to tell right now. Very hard. Oh, <laughs> let's get him in the boat and find out what he looks like <laughs> with all that light. <laughs> Little crankbait bass. <sighs> he's not a giant by no means, folks, but he's a fish right in the middle of that channel. There you go. Well, we got stuck night fishing, didn't we, Matt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we came out to try, try to see what we could do, anyways. Right now, we're throwing some cranks and it hasn't been as good as what folks have been telling us, at least not yet, huh? Not yet, yeah. Last, last week, that uh, TBF tournament, shoot, there was a 27-pound bag weighed for five fish, and, yeah. you know, shoot, guys with 20 pounds didn't even cash a check. It was just wow. amazing, 
you know the unbelievable the fish that are coming out of apache are just giants you know healthy we're trying to figure it out for well, tomorrow night yeah <laughs> we're, we're throwing you know 6xd uh crank baits trying to get them down there to where we can uh really feel the bottom and you need to be bumping rock i was bumping rock by the way and yeah same and here grinding down a little bit what are you throwing that sexy shad yep sexy shad and you know i get a lot of questions on you know people ask me what what to throw at night and where to fish at night and i'll tell you you know i i fish the same areas at night that i fish during the day you know those the areas that you fish during the day that you found fish on they have fish on them at night too just fish the same areas just a lot of times just slow down you know that's exactly slow right. down you know i really like to throw power worms you know yeah. that kind of thing something with some scent on them and and uh you know fish them slow and just concentrate on those areas you know there's one right right there right there maddie just broke off what <laughs> you just broke off oh. Oh, 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 oh that's a good one dude i got you that's a good one <laughs> i heard the splash <laughs> oh oh yeah that's a nice fish <laughs> take your time can you get, you get it yeah <laughs> oh oh that's a nice one dude fatty <laughs> Got him. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Little night fish in the Patchy Lake bass. Look at that. All right, son. Nice fish. <laughs> Look at that, folks. <laughs> how big? Oh, four pounder. Wow. Look how thick that fish is right there. Wow. That's what we come here for at night, right there, man. That, those are the kind of fish you want to catch. Beautiful fish, huh, Matt? Healthy. You yeah. just broke off that rock, and I'm like, I know. did I feel something tick or what? Nice fish. Wow, we'll let it go. Well, what did we have to do? Slow down. <laughs> we tried the crankbaits. We'd started out with spinnerbaits and ended up slowing down and going to a big worm. 10 inch that power 10 worm. inch power worm again. Can you believe that? I mean, it's one of my favorite baits, you know, it, it, you know, green pumpkin, watermelon candy, you know, the, the blue flake, you know, any, of the, dark, any of the darker colors at night. <laughs> <laughs> Were we lucky or what? <laughs> yeah, any of the darker colors at night, you know, with the silhouette it gives, uh, you know, it has uh, the scent to it. I mean, it, it, they're hard to beat. The chigger craws, power worms, you know, seven and 10 inch power worms are just, uh, you know, a staple out here in Arizona, you know, fishing at night. Yeah. Westy worms too, if you still have some or <laughs> want to use a, a some. Want to use a heavy rod with this, obviously, and some 17 pound test line, half ounce, half ounce uh, bullet weight. I got a little bead on there, you know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. We've we've kind of gone off and off and on with the bead here and there, but my line is really frayed. You bring it across those rocks like that. That's the key, you know. If you know they're eating crawdads and stuff at night, you gotta find those little rock piles and be bringing it across the rock, and and man, you'll start catching them, huh? You know, and, and I like the bead too, because you know you're pulling over a rock and it sits, and you can shake it a little bit and make that clicking sound. And they're those, jumping behind us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, the, yeah, you make that noise, and those fish are curious. They're gonna come check it out. You know, when you make that clicking sound, like the crawdads along the rocks or that kind of thing, it makes a little click to it, and I think it helps for sure. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, you know, when you're night fishing, I know a lot of people get afraid to go out at night, especially if you don't go out that often because you're worried about your navigation. Well, you know, with today's graphs, you get the mapping system. You can actually get out early before it gets dark and make some trails. You can see these little black lines down here. These are trails that we made and you can follow these trails and it'll keep you off the sides or the edges. And making sure you got a good spotlight you know, you want to make sure that you don't totally rely on that, but the trails will help you uh, with the GPS and the navigation there, but also having a good spotlight because you don't know if somebody don't have their lights on on their boat or something's going on. It's always good to just kind of, you know, flash that spotlight once in a while just to, just to be sure that, you know, you can see the bank. Oh, that's a good fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, folks! <laughs> Thanks, nice man. fish. Oh my goodness. How did I... Woo. Look at that fish now. That's what we're talking about. That's some Apache Lake bass right there, baby. Look at that. Matt, 
What do you awesome. think? Nice man, fish, I'm man. telling you. Big worm bass right there. We there's gotta no. throw at this point one more time. Dude, there's some, I got bit twice in there and uh, finally caught him. Let's let him go, catch us another fish. Tell me that's a big fish. Got him. <laughs> you got him? Got him. Oh, yeah, come on, man. <laughs> Two on that same point. <laughs> Oh. That's what that's what happens right there. Oh. Finding them. What a good fish Finding too. Them. He's throwing it, oh. man. Oh man, that's a good one. I just saw it flash. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't see him. There he is. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Look Another at that, good dude. one. Another good one. That's what I'm talking about. That's you find an area like that where you find a point that's just, it's got that chunk rock on it, and that's a thin point, but man. Another good fish. Well, I'll tell you what, it's the next day after the tournament. Last night we had basically an all-nighter for us with the ABA tournament at Apache Lake. Yep. We, we practiced for it during this show. And I'll tell you what, it was a tough night, but we ended up sixth place. We almost made a check. I know, eight one hundredths of a pound away from the, the fifth place check. We ended up sixth place. And you know what, we had four nice fish though. You know, we, we, we had uh, four fish for, 15 and a half pounds, something yep. like that. And uh, quality fish, our big fish was five pounds. That was a good so, fish. You yeah. caught that fish, that was a good fish. Well, that wasn't our biggest fish. No, that wasn't <laughs> our biggest fish. We thought we had the tournament won. Two things happened to us yeah. on this night. We, Matt lost a nice two, two and a half pound smallmouth bass. Just came out of the water, came unbuttoned. Yeah, right off the bat. And then, and then I set the hook on a fish of a lifetime, folks, but unfortunately <laughs> it was the wrong species. Giant fish. Huge, had to be 40 or 50 pound catfish. Guarantee it was 40 or 50 pounds. Unbelievable <laughs> when I set into that thing. But we tried hard and uh, we had a great time. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Apache Lake wasn't like it was last week. Man, what a difference a week makes. You know, <laughs> a lot of people were talking about catching 50 fish last week and we go out and had five fish on and we talked to the, the winners, uh, Creston Carroll and yeah. Ron Porter had uh, um, 22 pounds with a seven pound kicker. Their big fish was seven pounds. Yep. And they said that I think they only caught seven fish all night. So it yeah. just, just was a tougher night, you know, and these fish are like that. You know, we talk about it all the time. It's just sometimes, you know, the, 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 just one week difference makes, you know, you what bet. a difference it makes. Yeah, we made the same run that we made doing the show. But our next stop is cleaning the boats up, getting our rigs ready, and we're heading to the US Open. So we'll see what happens there. I wish you the best. Thank you so much, Matt. We'll Thank go you, over there and hopefully one of us will win that US Open. Until next it. week, I'm Johnny Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. US Open 2016 right. champion Johnny Johnson. And, and a nice yeah. for the boat. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>